Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to The Discriminating Gamer, the board game review show that Spiro Agnew decried as subversive and Lawrence Welk hailed as a great spiritual. That was one joke over the line. Ladies and gentlemen, I've decided I'm not going to run for Roy, I'm going to run for Viceroy. Hey, let's take a look at this game from Hobby World and Mayday Games. In Viceroy, from Hobby World and Mayday Games, two to four players are going to attempt to build pyramids of power using special cards and gems. How the game works is you're going to start with your own player screen, a number of different colored gems, red, blue, yellow, green, uh, and you're also going to get a special uh, cards, uh, gem cards, character cards rather, and uh, some law cards to start out your hands. Then what we're going to do is set out four distinct colored gem cards. On one side you're going to have a stack of character cards, a big stack, and you're going to have a little stack of character cards. You're also going to have some more law cards on that other side. The game is played out in kind of two phases every round. The first phase is a an auction phase. Essentially what you do is you lay down a character card beside each of those gem cards and you are going to then bid the gems you have on those specific characters. You hold up a number of red gems if you want the one in front of the red, or blue gems if you want the one in front of the blue. Whoever gets the most gets to take that card. Now if there's ties, you know, no one gets it. If, if it's three times, you have to pass. If you don't want to bid on anything, you can pass. And if you pass, you just get to take three gems from the pool. Now once you've gone through up to three rounds of auctioning, assume, assuming no one passed and people were still able to take cards, because you can't get two cards on a, on a round, uh, what you're going to do is go ahead then and proceed to kind of the development phase. Now, what you do in the development phase is you each simultaneously select a character card or a law card. Now each of these cards has a little number at the bottom, and after you all reveal them, uh, who has ever got the lowest number gets to go first, and then you go all the way up to the highest number. Now how you do this is you're going to create with the very first card you have in the game, you get to put that kind of on your base, the, the bottom of your pyramid. Now you can take that card and you're going to have to place the first one, of course, beside it. And then after that, you can place it on the base or the next level up or the next level up. Assuming you have uh, as many as you need, you can go up to five levels up. Now here's the thing. There's a cost for developing these cards. You'll notice that every character card has four gems on it. And you have to pay whatever row you're going on. And if you go on the first row, you just pay the one gem on the bottom row of that of those uh, gems on the character card. If you go two up, then you have to pay the lowest two. If you go three up, you have to pay the lowest three. And wherever you place it in your pyramid, on the first level, the second level, the third level, the fourth level, you then get a special reward that that card says. Now these rewards can be different things. You can draw more cards. You can draw more character cards or law cards. Law cards are kind of special cards that allow you to do special abilities on your pyramid or maybe to other people's pyramids. They're just kind of little game changers here and there. You may draw more gems. You may get uh, magic or science or some other kinds of, uh, you know, for lack of a better word, technologies you can add that will give you certain kinds of bonuses. You can attempt to uh, get uh, other kinds of bonuses that will allow you to score other things, like score magic or, or score if you place uh, certain uh, uh, character cards in such a way that they make circles that are one full gem. You can play stuff that will, or you can get rewards that will allow you to score those. You can also just straight up get victory points with these different uh, rewards you get. There's a lot of different things, a lot of variety, a lot of options that lead to scoring possibilities on these different level rewards. You may also get sword tokens, which can allow you to attack other players. You can get shield tokens, which can help defend you from other players. You also may get like eternal gems, meaning you can take a gem from the pool, place it on there, and then whenever you have to pay, say a yellow gem, uh, you don't the first one you don't have to pay because you already got this one that just kind of keeps going for you every turn. So players are going to take turns doing the auction phase, then doing the development phase, building up your pyramid, getting the different rewards, and kind of building different ways to score victory points. Now, when you do the auctions, if ever you pull out more cards, uh, if ever some cards didn't, didn't weren't bought, and you pull out another card, and those cards will shift to the top spot uh, on the other side of the cards. If they have to shift again, then those ones are discarded. But you're cycling through the auction cards, the character cards in the auction. You're also, of course, uh, uh, building those pyramids and creating those different kinds of ways to score. Now during the development phase you've got three rounds to play cards into your pyramid as well. 
Once you've gone through all of the character cards, which should be about 12 rounds of play, 12 total rounds of play, the game is over. You then proceed to scoring. You look at all the myriad different ways you can possibly score in this game, and whoever has the highest score wins. Viceroy. So Viceroy is one of those games that I heard a lot of really good things about. Um, you know, it's 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 kind of it kind of feels similar to, to Splendor in some ways, where you've got the gems, but it's it's a different game on a lot of levels. Um, this is a victory point salad game, to be sure, because you've got to keep track of so many different ways you can score, and it's one of those games too where you you, you know you you're kind of trying to be aware of what everybody else is doing. That's not always so easy. One of, the, one of the problems I had with this game, though, is the fact that when those four cards come out that you're bidding for, you have no control over the cards coming out, so it can be difficult to kind of develop any kind of a real strategy in trying to, to, to go for certain points, because you just don't know what's going to come out. And when they do come out, you may have enough gems to, to buy a card, but then you're not necessarily going to have enough gems to develop the card. You're thinking, well, maybe I can do that later, but events can overtake you, there may be other directions in the intervening time, and it, it gets a little overwhelming. And, if, and again, you can't really plan for a distinct victory. Now, there are some good choices throughout the game. You know, do I, do I, do I want that card because I can do that, or, and I can place it there, or I can place it there? Uh, you know, so, so, so there's a lot of that. But at the same time, this is kind of a game where there's all, I almost feel like there's almost too many choices because there's so much you can, you can do here. And is any kind of one path to victory necessarily better than another? In some cases, yes, but... It's 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 all a bit much. Now, having said all of that, this game has a, it's an abstract game, and you know I'm not a huge fan of abstract games. Uh, I like strong themes in game. There's really not a lot of theme here. There's great artwork. The artwork on the cards is phenomenal, but not a lot of really good theme. I I liked aspects of this game. Um, I'm not I'm not a fan of bidding either in games. The only game I, I can really think of where I really like bidding is Game of Thrones, the board game. A lot of other times, it, bidding just doesn't do much for me. Sometimes it's all right. Here, it it's such an important part of the game. It, it, I didn't actively dislike the bidding in this game like I do in a lot of games, um, but it didn't didn't overly thrill me either. Still, with all of my complaints and all of my caveats, there is something engaging about this game. There is something I enjoyed about this game. It's just not a game that I think I'm going to be reaching for a lot. And I can see people out there playing this game, really enjoying this game. For me, you know, I I, I liked it, and I, I don't know that I really need to play it again. So the recommendation for the Discriminating Gamer for Viceroy is try it before you buy it. A lot of people out there are going to like it. Me... It was okay. Thank you once again for joining us today on The Discriminating Gamer. As always, we ask you to please leave a comment for us on YouTube, on Board Game Geek, on our Facebook page, or on thediscriminatinggamer.com. We ask you to please like us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and follow us on Twitter. We are The Discriminating Gamer. And ladies and gentlemen, politicians may be able to build walls between countries, but they can only build walls between our hearts if we let them. Please somebody help me on my feet again And I don't know where I'm going You the one that was uh, that that was in charge of moving the ships around. I was, and you were the one. Now you're the one who kept putting the Borg like right in front of us. Uh huh. Interview over. <laughs>